uh, my name is Oktay. Today's video is about uh, graphene, which is an allotrope of carbon. Uh, the name comes from uh, graphite and the suffix uh, "-ene". Uh, the suffix "-ene", comes from the aromatic compounds like benzene, toluene. And graphene has a sp2 hybrid orbitals with pi bonds. Allotropes are different forms of the same element, for example, Oxygen has the allotropes uh, O2, dioxygen, and O3, ozone. This is the electron structure of graphene. You have the structure of the uh, hexagon structure. This is made of the uh, sigma bonds. Uh, the sigma electrons are, lo are localized. They are restricted to their orbitals. And uh, the sp2 hybrid uh, carbon atoms have um, p orbitals. They overlap and uh, make the pi bonds. And the pi electrons are delocalized. They can move freely in the, in this molecule. Now, these are the known uh, allotropes of carbon. Um, you have diamond with sp3 hybridization and uh, graphite with sp2 hybridization. Uh, diamond is uh, known for its, um, it's a very uh, hard material. As graphite is a, uh, uh, it's a softer. You, uh, you can move this layer as a, uh, Uh, this is another allotrope of carbon, uh, it's uh, nanotubes, uh, there are several uh, versions of it. Uh, this is the zigzag version, the armchair version, and the chiral version. And these compounds are known for their um, uh, strength. This is another allotrope of carbon, um, uh, these are the fullerenes. Uh, they were discovered in 1985. Um, there are many uh, versions of them, um, these are just two, two of the examples, C60. It's like the, uh, like the soccer football and the uh, C70. And they are very interesting compounds. Uh, you can put uh, functional groups uh, to these uh, molecules and uh, do all kinds of chemistry. Uh, but they have one uh, disadvantage. Uh, they are just too expensive. And that's why they uh, didn't uh, really make it to uh, mass production. This right picture shows you uh, uh, graphite. Um, this is found in uh, nature, and at the left here you can see the structure of these uh, hexagon layers. And some uh, scientists predicted uh, this, this was not possible to uh, separate these uh, layers from each other. Or it is known um, that uh, these layers are um, only held together by the van der Waals force, and this force is uh, known to be very weak. And that's why uh, pencils work, uh, because uh, when you write with a pencil, uh, several layers are slid off and uh, they stick to the paper. So this, um, these layers ca can be separated. And the two scientists, Andre Graham and uh, Konstantin Novoselov, uh, made it happen. Uh, they used a scotch tape technique uh, to separate layers from uh, graf graphite, transferred it to silicon dioxide, SiO2. And uh, they repeated this process and had uh, got uh, fewer and fewer uh, layers of uh, graphite. And with this technique, they were able to uh, make enough uh, graph graphene uh, to characterize the, characterize the compound. And that earned them the 2010 the Nobel Prize in Physics. Uh, obviously, with this uh, scotch tape technique, you can make uh, a, lo um, a lot of uh, graphene. These are um, some of the ways to uh, make uh, big amounts of graf graphene. Uh, there are liquid phase exfoliation of graf graphite, uh, with sonication or electrochemical exfoliation, or chemical vapor de deposition on silicon carbide, or plasma pyrolysis of methane uh, CH4. Uh, these are the applications of uh, gra graphene. Uh, we can use it for LED solar cells, touch screens, water filtration, or for composite materials. Uh, graphene is also interesting as an additive for concrete. It strengthens it uh, by 30%. Uh, this means you need uh, less concrete. And this is uh, important because uh, construct the construction business uh, industry is known uh, for its uh, high global emissions of uh, up to 8% of uh, total global uh, CO2 emissions. In the United Kingdom, there's a institute, National Graphene Institute, NGI. It was opened in 2015, 
and uh, they're researching applications of graphene and uh, other 2D materials. And this makes a lot of sense uh, because this is a potential uh, billion dollar per year business. Uh, the graphene anode is interesting for the lithium ion battery. It gives it a higher capacity, fast charging. It is lightweight, uh, flexible, and uh, high, it has a high temperature range. And with the help of graphene, uh, you could uh, replace uh, lithium uh, with sodium, and this would uh, give you a cost benefit. Uh, then there's this compound, uh, graphene oxide. Uh, there are three uh, ways to add uh, oxygen to these uh, graphene layers. You have your epoxy bridges, hydroxyl groups, and carboxyl groups. And uh, this compound is interesting if, uh, for energy storage, medical applications, and for special paper. And this is a ball and stick uh, model of the graphene oxide. Graphene oxide. Uh, it can make uh, many uh, intermolecular hydrogen bonds. That's why, uh, why it's soluble in water and in alcohol. Um, graphite is not the only um, compound with layer structures. Uh, you could uh, make a graphene analog, uh, but with uh, silicon atoms. This gives you a silicene. And this is also a very interesting compound. This is uh, not flat. And it is interested, interesting for uh, transistors and nanosheets. Uh, you could use uh, boron atoms. Boron has only three outer electrons. Uh, this picture shows you uh, possible uh, structures of uh, borophene. Um, Boron atoms uh, use a trick to uh, get to an uh, octet of electrons. They make uh, multi-centered bonds. If there are more than uh, two boron atoms, share one electron pair. And this allows them uh, to uh, reach the electron configuration of uh, neon, noble gas neon. And there are still active uh, research going on in this kind of co compounds, but also in germanine, and plumbene, and stannine. Um, if you separate the hexagons and put uh, triple bonds in between, you get graphene. Graphene, this is a picture of graphene 1. It is another allotrope of uh, carbon. And you can uh, use the metathesis alkyne synthesis to make these compounds. This uh, uses a metal catalyst, typically it's molybdenum or tungsten. Uh, in, uh, this the reaction can go to the right, but also to the left. But you can force it to the right by removing this uh, byproduct. And this gives you this uh, compound graphene 1, uh, also a very interesting compound. Uh, you can put uh, more than uh, one triple bond uh, between the hexagons. This gives you uh, different versions of graphene, graphene n. n is the number of uh, triple bonds between the hexagons. And they all have slightly different um, properties, and that makes them uh, very interesting for transistors. Uh, all these new compounds uh, were possible uh, with the discovery of uh, graphene. Uh, that's a typical phenomenon in uh, science. Uh, you, make, uh, you find the answer to one question, and uh, suddenly 10 more questions uh, come up. There's a, a very interesting uh, molecule on the top. Uh, that's nanocar. It has wheels that are made of uh, fullerene. Uh, since the CC uh, single bond is, uh, can rotate, this uh, car has working uh, wheels, uh, but it has no uh, motor. And the picture in the bottom shows you the helical nanomotor inside a cancer cell. So the combination of all these techniques, uh, nanocar, nanomotors, nanosensors, and new materials, would give you one day uh, nanobots like uh, like in the character 7 of 9 in uh, Star Trek, uh, Voyager. And uh, these nanobots could uh, do all kinds uh, of work uh, in the human body and could uh, practically repair the human body. That's why uh, this, this science is uh, very relevant. And uh, it's about the combination of these techniques uh, that could lead uh, to very useful things, uh, which could uh, potentially save uh, human life. Uh, that was today's video about uh, graphene and graphene. Uh, my next video will be about the chemical element gold. 
Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.